friends. Welcome back to yoga. I hope all of you had a great winter break and did something that was relaxing and filled your heart right up. Okay? Um, we did have a wonderful break. We were all home, even my husband, who's usually working. So it was nice to be together some more and um, to get outside in this beautiful snow. Lots of sledding. So, Okay, friends. Today we are going to read a book. The Couch Potato. I don't know about your family, but in addition to being out in the snow, we also did a lot of movie watching and things like that, sitting on our behinds, which is good, but as we see in the book, it needs to be a good balance. So, okay friends, today we are going to start with our finger tracing breath, then we're going to do our sequence, and then we'll read this book. Okay, so bring your hand up. All, you're all old hat at this. So bring your thumb to the base of your pointer finger. Inhale. Trace up. Exhale. Trace down. Thumb to the base of your tall finger. Inhale. Trace up. Exhale, trace down. Thumb to the base of your ring finger. Inhale, trace up. Exhale, trace down. Pinky finger. Inhale, trace up. Exhale, trace down. And back we go. Ring finger. Inhale, trace up. Exhale, trace down. Tall finger, inhale, trace up. Exhale, trace down. Pointer finger, inhale, trace up. Exhale, trace down. Very good. Okay, friends, I'm going to scooch back onto my mat here. Let's all come to child pose to start, huh? Sit on your feet, elbows and hands to the mat. Forehead either all the way touching the mat or on your stacked hands. And once again, let's feel our breath rise and fall against our legs. If you can't feel that on your belly rising and falling against your legs, take a deeper breath. Okay, last one. And your next inhale, come up to your tabletop and we'll do some cat cows here. Remember, inhaling, drop your belly. Exhaling, arch your back and drop your head. Inhale, head and tailbone to the sky, belly goes down. Exhale, arch your back. Inhale, drop your belly. Exhale, arch your back. From here, friends, let's scooch back into our child pose once again. We're not going to stay here for long. So walk your hands forward. Your bottom half is right next to child pose, but your hands and your arms are, you're using your muscles there, okay? You're going to take a big inhale, and on your exhale, you're going to walk your hands to the side of your mat and lean into this hip, the opposite side. So get a big stretch in your side. Big, big stretch. Good. Walk our hands back to the center and to the other side and stretching back into that hip once more. There you go. Might feel a big stretch over here. Okay. Let's come back to center here. 
and we will tuck our toes under and come to our first downward dog, okay? Okay, you might want to pedal your feet out, bending one knee and then the other. Stretch out your legs a little bit. Then find some stillness. Go ahead and shift forward into your high plank. Remember, you can drop your knees or not. Here, you can exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale into child pose. We're all meeting our downward dog. Okay, we'll do one more of those. Shift forward into your high plank. This time, I will drop my knees. Exhaling down to the mat. Inhaling, push up. Exhale into child pose, and then we all meet in downward dog. From here, friends, let's step our feet up between our hands. Inhale your arms up overhead. We're going to actually exhale into chair. Remember to look at your feet and make sure you can see your toes down under your knees, okay? From here, actually, and I'll turn once more. We're going to bring one arm back for a twist. So my legs are still in chair. Just bringing one arm back, and then you can look if you want behind you at your back hand. So my feet were moving, friends. You're the thing where they are. I was just trying to show you what I was doing there, okay? Now, from here, we're going to do something kind of fun. When this back hand, hand comes forward, so for me, it's my left arm. It's going to cross under my right arm. I'm going to come into eagle arm. So my left arm is under. I'll put my left egg, or my left egg, my left leg over into eagle. Doesn't really matter what side you're on as long as you're on the opposite side next time. Hang out here for just a minute longer. And when we come out of this hold, we're going to take this top leg, so our left leg, and bring it back to our warrior one. And our arms are going to go to warrior one arms, okay? So think about your standing leg, that's what you're standing on. Make sure you're balanced in there. And then we'll move our bodies into warrior one. There you go. Kind of a neat little trick, huh? Find where you're comfortable in your warrior one. Okay. Straight and strong, arms up to the sky. Go to warrior two. Very good. Remember your hips go from here to sideways. Okay. Now we'll shift forward to over our front hand and tick tock our front hand to the ground, top hand to the sky, into our extended side angle. I feel like it's been a while since I've done these poses. I bet you guys might feel like that as well. Okay, now here's a tricky turn. We're going to take our front hand, put it outside of our front foot, and our top hand comes to the inside. Bring your front foot, or your back foot, in just a little bit. So my back foot was here. Now I bring it in and straighten my front leg. Okay? So I'll do it one more time. I was here. Bring this hand here. This hand down. Front leg comes in. There you go. Pyramid. That's kind of a new tricky move, huh? And then you can drop your head and your hand down. Or if this pose is tricky for your flexibility, rest your hands on your shin. Or even here on your thigh. Whatever feels good for you. Take a couple breaths here. My foot's kind of blocking my face. There we go. From here, friends, to my back foot here, I'm going to turn it out. And then I'm going to walk my hand center. My other foot will follow a little bit. And now I'm in a wide-legged forward fold. So I'll forward fold here. My hands are touching the ground because that's how my body is made. But your body might be better to have your hands on your shins or up on your thighs, okay? Another option, too, is to bend your knees. That might feel better 
on your legs or your back. Hang out here for just a minute. This is one of my favorite poses. All right, let's slowly roll up into hands to the sky. There's a five-pointed star. And then you might remember this. We did this one more one time in the fall. We're going to bring our weight onto our right leg and balance like this. The tipping five-pointed star. Very good. And back to the job. Very good. Okay, friends. From here, we're going to step our left leg back once more into our warrior one, our warrior two. We're going to reverse our warrior. Come back to warrior two. Warrior one. You guys are old habits. You step forward. We're going to come into our airplane. You know what to do. Put off the floor. Back into your warrior one. And from here, friend, let's bring our hands to the mat. Front foot back and do the chaturanga of your choice with your knees up or down. There we go. Inhale here. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale into child's pose. Or we all meet in down dog. Take a big breath here, and on your exhale, step your feet up between your hands. Inhale your arms up overhead, and once again, we'll come into our chair. This time, we're going to go, we're going to revolve our chair, or do our twist to the other side. So now I have my right hand back instead of my left, and I'm looking behind me at my right hand. From here, remember, we'll go to eagle. So I'm going to sweep my right arm under my left. Twist them all up. Get the eagle arms with my right arm under. And now my right leg will go over. So I'm back in the eagle here. Good job. Okay. Stay here for just a minute more. Bring, remember this right leg is going to unwrap. So focus on your left standing leg. Make sure you have some balance there. And we'll unwrap our right leg and our hands and our arms into warrior one. So here we go. There you are. Very good. Kind of a fun little move, huh? So warrior one, straight and strong. Very good. Warrior two, arms in front and back. Very good. Head parallel to the floor. Very good. Okay, let's shift forward towards your front hand. Tick tock into the ground. Back hand towards the sky. Extended side angle here. You can also rest your elbow on your knee if that feels good. Okay. Now, friend, do you stay where you are? I'm going to turn so you can see this transition, okay? So we're right here. Now take your bottom hand outside of your front leg. The top hand comes to the inside. And then we bring back our front, our back leg forward and our front leg straightens. Okay? Good. Remember you can stay here. You can have your hand on your chin or on your side. Wherever works for your body. Okay. Stay here for a moment and get a little stretch. Good. Now, friends, remember we take our back foot, bring our toes outside, facing away from our body, and walk our hand center and kind of adjust your feet so they feel good. We're back here in forward fold. And we can have your hands here on the mat, chin, 
or thighs. And this time, if you want, you can bend one knee and then the other knee. Gives you a nice stretch on the inside of your legs. If this does not feel good to you, you can keep your body still or move it in a way that feels good to you. Okay. Okay. All right, friends. Come back to center. Both your knees straight. Roll up into five-pointed star. And shine your heart to the sky. Very good. Now remember, we'll do the tipped five-pointed star on this side. So we'll kind of shift our weight. I'm doing my left leg. You do whichever leg you did not do before. Bring your other foot off the ground. Mm -hmm. And back to center. Very good. Okay, friends. Bring our right leg back once more. Back into our warrior one. And warrior two. We're back to our old usual. Reverse your warrior. Back to warrior two. Warrior one. Remember airplane. So shift onto your front foot. Airplane arm. Look at something that's not moving. Very good. And we'll just oh, step back into our warrior one. Hands to the mat. Step your foot back. I'm going to do one more chaturanga. I'll drop my knees this time. Big inhale here. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale into child pose. We all meet in our downward dog. Very good, friends. Okay, let's come to our knees and wrap our feet around back into seated. Do some stretches. Maybe we could start today with our butterfly. I haven't done butterfly in a while. I'm noticing you can't see my feet. Remember, they just soles of your feet together. And bring your knees wide. You can flap our butterfly wings a bit. Yeah. If you are a kiddo that likes to decide what kind of flower you're landing on and butterfly, go ahead and do that. I'm, hmm. I think I'm going for a yellow flower today. Okay, if you found your flower, go ahead and land on it by folding forward deeper. Or if you haven't, you can deepen our fold, forward fold either way. You can quiet your legs here in your deeper fold. If you are a butterfly, you can get a drink of nectar. There we go. Okay. Let's bring our legs wide to the side. Bring your belly button toward one leg. Lean forward over that leg. Your hands can touch your foot, your shin, or your thigh. Whichever works for you. Walk your hands back to the center, all the way to the other side. Your belly button facing this way. Again, you hands touch wherever feels good for you. Okay, friends. Let's sit up. We'll come to lying down on our mat. bringing your arms wide. If you'd like, bring your knees to the sky, feet off the floor, and straighten so your feet are toward the sky, your legs up the wall. Feeling that gentle sensation of the blood kind of lightening in the tops of your feet. back towards the carpet. We'll go ahead and do our twist. So bring your knees to one side, your nose to the other. Okay. 
okay friends, let's bring our knees through center, drop towards the sky and then drop them to the other side and our nose goes opposite once again. Okay, friends, you can bring your knees to the sky. You can either stay on your back here and listen to the story however you like to bring your legs long, or you can put your hands behind your knees and rock up and listen from seated. I'm going to turn the sound off here on my music so you can hear me talk about the couch potato. Okay, got to get my glasses on, friends. I tell you what. Okay, so here we go. The couch potato. I'm going to sit to the side so you can get a good look at the pictures here. Look at all these different kinds of potatoes. Got french fries. Hmm. Maybe a baseball plain sweet potato, mashed potatoes, a hot potato. A grumpy potato. I don't think I've ever ordered a grumpy potato. Take this dust jacket off here quick. Okay, the couch potato. I am a potato. Not a small potato like my brother. Not a sweet potato like my mother. Not a mashed potato like my Uncle Stu. I am a couch potato. Oh, yeah, it's true. My favorite place to slouch is on the couch. I spend all my free time sitting in this exact spot. Ah, why would I ever leave this comfy, cozy couch? It's got everything a potato could need. How many of you have a favorite place on your couch or chair or maybe your bed where you like to relax? See, I have this, and this, and this, and one of these, and those, and this, and this, and that, and these. Oh my goodness. Oh, and this. Check it out. This button activates a gadget that fet fetches me snacks whenever I want. Bam! Impressed. And I don't have to move an inch. Much easier than going to the kitchen. Oh my goodness goodness. I think I have a few kids here who wouldn't mind that kind of situation. If the most important thing in life is to be comfortable at all times, then I think I've got it all figured out. But wait, there's more. I haven't revealed the absolute best part about my whole setup. It's everything you see in front of me. Have a look around. Take it all in. Pretty spectacular, right? Yes, it's a sea of shimmering screens from wall to shining wall. What a joy. What bliss. These screens feature my favorite shows. Mad Yam, Fries, Mashed Potatoes. This screen has all my unanswered messages. These screens are where I play video games. And this screen is a live stream of my friend, my best bud for life. This is how my pals and I spend quality time together. It's much easier than trying to meet up somewhere like folks did in the old days, that's for sure. Hi, Spuddy. Hey, pal Tato. Yes. From this very couch, I can control everything in my life, all the time, with just a few taps and a couple of clicks. Not bad, hey? Ah, <sighs> yes siree, this is the life. At least, that's what I thought. 
until the other day. What happened? Something strange happened. There was a knock at the door. It was a delivery. See that landing from the chute? It was my newest device, a video camera that would allow me to watch myself react while I was watching all my favorite shows. All I had to do was plug it in, and in my room, nay, my kingdom, would be complete. But suddenly, pew, everything went dark. Look out, coming through. Whoops, ow, whoop. What the, what happened? I made it to the window. I pulled back the curtains. The sun seemed brighter than I remembered. There was nothing better to do, so I decided to take my dog, Tater, for a walk outside. It had been a while. Everything was so vivid, like a high-resolution 156-inch curved screen, but even more realistic. Something smelled fresh. After a few moments, I realized that it was the air. I heard a noise, some chirps, a ringtone perhaps? But no, I looked up to see some birds. I wandered down the street from block to block and across the neighborhood. Eventually, I found a park with a hill. There was a massive tree on top. It looked like a desktop background. Only it was real. Neat. I leaned against the tree. It wasn't as comfortable as my couch, not even close. But after a while, it wasn't so bad. <sighs> Any worries about the power outage and what I might be missing drifted away. I wasn't thinking about my favorite shows or my unanswered messages or anything else, really. I noticed the stillness, the view, the sky, the clouds, the sunset, and those colors. My goodness. It took a while because there was no fast forward option. But eventually, the sun sank below the horizon. Pretty, huh? By the time I got home, the power was back on, and I sat on the couch. I hit the button to brush my teeth. I pulled the lever to change my pajamas. I turned the knob to watch a bedtime story. Then I noticed my reflection in one of the screens. I wondered how much of my life had been spent in that very spot. It was then and there that I made the decision to peel myself up off the couch more often, maybe every day even. How many of you have noticed your face in the screen before? And so that's what I've done. I've started hanging out with my friends, my best buddies outside. We started biking and hiking and swimming and hiding and seeking. Sometimes we have snacks and play board games. Sometimes we talk all day. We might watch the clouds. There's no big plan. We just see what happens. That looks fun, guys. These are kind of things that we are looking forward to doing, aren't they? Once quarantine is over and it's summer, you know, we could do sledding and things like that outside. It makes me wonder what if I don't always need to be totally comfortable? What if I'm happier when I have a better balance between my gadgets and the world outside? Because it turns out that I'm more than a just a couch potato. I'm an amusing potato and a smart potato and a kind potato. I'm an entertaining potato and I'm a sit on the hill and watch the sunset potato.
Yes, there's a great big world out there, and I want to be a part of it. In person. But don't get me wrong. At the end of a long day, after I've run and played and talked and laughed with my friends, I still think it's awfully nice to slouch on the couch. <sighs> He's reading The Catcher and the Fry from the old classic, The Catcher and the Rye. Okay, friends. What did you think about that book? In this time of COVID and quarantine, we do spend a lot of extra time on our screens. And some of that we can't help, right? We have school on the screen. We maybe have lessons or sports on the screen. And we do what we have to do, right? But it's also so important to get outside and get some fresh air and do some things that are really interactive. I do not like to be cold. But this winter, I decided to get some new snow pants just head out and guess what I loved it every minute and I'm not even cold when I have my right clothes on so it feels good to have the sun on our faces or on my face and go sweating or whatever there is to do outside that day okay friends well I hope maybe each of you can think of one activity you'd like to do outside and I don't know maybe you could draw about it or think about it or ask your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or caretaker if you could go out and do that today. All right, let's close with our volcano breath. My hands to my heart and I'm thinking of who could use my love today. Or maybe somebody I'd like to see in person soon. Hmm? Hmm. Is that it? All right, I hope you do too. Inhale your person and blow them your love. Okay, thanks. Thanks, friends. I'll see you next week.